Hello and welcome to these notes on uh, autosomal and chromosomal disorders. We're going to be talking about different ways um, that traits uh, are inherited, um, particularly um, we'll talking about diseases. So uh, there are many different uh, genetic disorders that plague humans. Um, some of these disorders are caused by a change uh, in just one allele. Um, but some of them uh, can be many, much more complicated. So uh, some of them are going to involve entire chromosomes um, that are being changed. Um, other ones can just deal with simple um, point mutations, which we've talked about before, um, or some of them can be um, more complex. Uh, <coughs> autosomal disorders are going to involve um, a couple different types. They can be dominant, recessive, or other traits. Um, and they're going to be occurring on our autosomal chromosomes, which, uh, as you recall, we're going to be chromosomes 1 through 22. Uh, these can include cystic fibrosis, sickle cell, uh, and Huntington's disease, um, but there are many, many more different types. So just to sort of um, go back over which ones are our chromosomes, um, the uh, our autosomal chromosomes, it's going to be these right here, 1 through 22. Okay, those are the ones that um, have most of the traits, um, as opposed to our sex uh, cells, or, or sorry, sex chromosomes, which are our X or Ys. Um, and remember, these are the ones that are going to be determining sex. Um, and there are some traits that are on the X chromosomes, um, but remember, the Y chromosomes do not have uh, any traits. Uh, so cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele. Um, remember that means that they uh, it's going to be masked by a dominant trait, so it's not going to be quite as prevalent in the population um, because of that. And, and in most cases, CF involves uh, a gene that's going to be missing three bases in the middle of a sequence for a protein. Uh, and the problem with that is that when you miss those three bases, um, you lose a, a couple of amino acids. So in this case, it actually knocks out two uh, amino acids. Um, now remember, because we're missing three bases, it's not going to completely change the frame shift for all of them, um, but it is going to be affecting a, a large majority of uh, that protein. Um, and children who have CF um, generally have serious digestive problems, um, as well as they produce a thick mucus that clogs the lungs and breathing passageways. Um, and I'm going to have a link up here so that you can see um, exactly uh, how that works, um, and you can learn more about CF. Uh, so here's how the in inheritance of CF works. Again, it's a recessive trait. Um, so the father um, if, and the mother, if they're both carriers, um, they're going to have that typical 3 to 1 ratio. 75% um, of their children are not going to have CF, but 25% chance that they can have a child with CF. Um, now remember, you know, that's just percentages, so it sort of depends on how it works out as to whether or not they're going to get CF. Um, and uh, it's going to be that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio um, that we see from a, a monohybrid cross of um, uh, the homozygous uh, dominant and then heterozygous and then homozygous recessive. Uh, so I, I talked before about how uh, CF um, messes with a protein, and that particular protein um, is CFTR, um, which is what allows chloride ions to pass through cellular membranes. Um, and this is very important when it comes to lung function as well as digestive function, uh, and, and also sweat glands to some extent. Um, and so when that protein doesn't work properly, um, the CFTR cannot allow the chloride ions to pass through, um, and that's how you get the, the mucus buildup. Uh, another uh, type of disease uh, is sickle cell disease. Um, we've talked about this before um, when we talked about mutations. Uh, it's caused by an incomplete dominant or codominant gene on chromosome number 11. Uh, and the sickle cell gene is just one DNA base difference. So an A has been changed into a T, and that's going to result in a single amino acid being changed uh, in the proteins for hemoglobin. And you'll remember that hemoglobin is what actually carries oxygen in the blood cells. And so having that single protein changed basically makes it uh, very difficult um, for your blood cells to carry the oxygen that they need. Um, and this particularly happens when you're having low levels of oxygen in your body. Um, so generally people get attacks or, uh, or um, uh, have pain when they are uh, doing exercise and so a lot of people that have sickle cell cannot exercise properly because of that.
Um, the sickle cells, when they when they form, they sort of get that that crescent shape, and so they get stuck on one another, and they can get stuck in the tissues and organs, um, and it can be fatal. Um, generally, it's not though. Um, so, uh, people who actually have the sickle cell disease are, um, uh, you know, are said to have it, but those who are heterozygous are said to have the sickle cell trait. And again, I'll have another uh, link up here for the animation so that you can um, uh, get more in-depth with that if, if you'd like. So here's the inheritance patterns. Again, it's recessive. Um, so you've got the uh, father with the uh, normal gene, normal hemoglobin, and then the uh, abnormal hemoglobin. Same thing with the mother. They're both carriers. Uh, and then they can, again, it's the same ratio of that 1 to 2 to 1 of the homozygous dominant. This should be an A, uh, not an S. Um, and then you've got your two heterozygous children and finally your uh, homozygous uh, recessive. Uh, so here's sort of what those sickle cells are going to look like as compared to a normal blood cell. You can see that shape, and that's what allows them um, to get stuck on one another. Uh, Huntington's disease is actually caused by a dominant gene, and, and this is a, a large issue because even if you only get one copy of it, um, you're going to have Huntington's. Um, one of the major problems with Huntington's is that you do not actually recognize that you have the trait until much later on into your life. Um, generally people don't start to realize that they, or start to express symptoms until they're into their late 30s, early 40s. Um, and at that point you've, a lot of people have already had children and, they, and they've, so they've already passed on their trait to their children. So this is one of those traits that um, a lot of people think about getting tested for um, with uh, using the biotechnology, the, the newborn screenings or, or other things like that um, because they have to make a choice as to whether or not they're going to want to have kids because again if they've got the dominant allele and they pass that on um, then their children are going to have it. Um, again there's going to be a link down here that you can learn more about Huntington's uh, if you would like. So uh, here's how um, here's how, how the uh, how the trait is passed on. Um, if you've got an affected father, um, so he's going to have at least one dominant. Let's say he's heterozygous in that case. Um, yeah, he's going to be able to pass it down to any of his children. And so uh, you see in Huntington's, um, if you were to do a pedigree for this, um, you're going to see that yeah, there's a lot more people that are affected in the uh, in the pedigree because it's dominant, so it's just going to be showing up um, much more often. Uh, so Huntington's disease, um, what happens is that there is a protein called Huntington, uh, not Huntington, uh, that interacts with uh, other proteins in the brain, uh, and so when that gets um, when that gets uh, affected, it, it, that's where the issues come. Um, and again, if you want to learn more about that, you can go back and, and click on the link. Uh, so some other autosomal disorders, um, you've got uh, recessive disorders, albinism, um, which is lacking uh, skin pigment, melanin. Uh, you've got phenylketonuria, PKU, you can't break down phenylalanine. And we talked about this before, um, where children have to go on a special diet in order to make sure they're not getting any phenylalanine in their diets when they're younger um, because it can have issues with brain development. Uh, Tay-Sachs, this is where fatty tissues are going to accumulate in the nerve cells of the brain. Um, and this is usually fatal fairly early in life um, just because your, your neurons can't function when there's um, all these fatty acids built up on them. And then there are some dominant autosomal disorders, such as uh, achondroplasia, which is dwarfism, and hypertrichosis, which is werewolf syndrome. And we're going to take sort of a, a visual look at some of those different things. So here's albinism. Um, she's, gonna, she's got the albino trait. Uh, here's some more albino individuals. Again, they're just missing the melanin um, in, their, in their skin, and so they just do not have any um, ability to produce skin pigment and so they appear very white and you can you see that their hair is similar. Um, people who are albinos tend to also not have any pigment in their eyes which gives them sort of a red or pinkish tint. Um, albinism can also happen in animals so here we've got the the squirrel um, you can see the uh, the red eyes here. Uh, uh, you can also have bears and here's an albino penguin and then an albino deer. Achondroplasia or dwarfism um, again is dominant so if that's passed along you know all of your children are, are generally going to be uh, have, have the dwarfism as well. 
Uh, hypertrichosis is um, wear off syndrome, and so that's called that because the uh, overproduction of uh, hair um, in, in areas that most humans do not see hair. So you can see the baby here has lots of hair um, on uh, on their arm and then also on their forehead. Uh, and you can sort of see how that manifests itself. So chromosomal disorders, okay? So we've been talking about disorders that have just occurred on um, small points and just occurring in one gene. Um, but there are some chromosomal disorders that are going to be uh, larger, have larger effects because they're going to affect entire chromosomes. Uh, so chromosomal disorders occur when uh, homologous chromosomes fail to separate, which is called non-disjunction during meiosis. So if you'll recall, um, homologous pairs are going to separate during meiosis two, uh, specifically during metaphase two and anaphase two. So this creates a genome with either an extra chromosome or a missing chromosome. Uh, I'm sorry, homologous chromosomes separate, don't separate out during metaphase one um, when they should be uh, splitting apart. Uh, so non-destruction can occur with any chromosome 1 through 23, and we're going to look at some different examples of that. So here's non-destruction, and again, it does occur during meiosis 1. Uh, the A and B um, chromosomes here you can see are getting pulled to one side um, instead of being split apart. And so what that's going to do is it's going to leave all of those cells with a, a incorrect number because of the fact that it occurs during meiosis 1. Um, some different examples of those are Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, and Kleinfelters, um, but there are uh, others as well. So Down syndrome is caused by an extra um, copy of chromosome number 21. Uh, in most cases, uh, Down syndrome is also called trisomy 21. However, there are a couple of other different types, but in, in general it's going to be trisomy 21, um, that meaning that you've got three versions of 21. Often DS or Down syndrome is associated with impairment of cognitive ability and physical growth. So these individuals are going to be um, have mental uh, issues um, as well as physical issues. Uh, incidence of Down syndrome is one per 800 to 1,000 births. Um, but uh, there are statistics that show that the age of the mo mother is going to heavily influence Down syndrome. So um, the, the older the mother, um, it's thought that the uh, homologous programs uh, homologous chromosome separating is going to have an issue. It is not generally an inherited disorder because it just sort of occurs randomly um, where your homologous pairs do not separate, so it's not generally um, an inherited thing. It just sort of can happen uh, at random. Uh, and again, there will be a link down here if you're interested in learning more about Down syndrome. So here's um, a karyotype showing Down syndrome. Um, you can notice that we've got our pairs for most all of our other chromosomes except for our 21. You can see that we've got our three pairs here. And again, this is a female. We've got two female um, X chromosomes. Um, so this sort of just shows you some of the different um, issues that you're going to have with Down syndrome. Again, that extra 21 um, causes the overproduction or the overexpression um, of um, proteins, which are going to sort of lead to some, some various issues, uh, which you can see here. Uh, here's sort of uh, uh, visuals of what you get of uh, what happens with um, uh, those who have Down syndrome. You can see that you've got your toes and your fingers are a little bit offset. Um, as uh, according to what you would normally have. Turner syndrome is caused by a missing X chromosome, or it's also known as monosomy X, so mono meaning one, uh, and this is a female's because you have no Y, and in order to be a male you must have the Y. Um, sometimes it can be where you have a second X chromosome, but that's not generally uh, true, um, but when it is called, that's called mosaicism sort of a, a built off the word mosaic. Um, and in Turner syndrome, female sexual characteristics are present but generally undeveloped. So missing that X chromosome, um, the female secondary sex characteristics are not going to be very present. Um, so here's what that looks like. Again, with the karyotype, you can see that we've got all of our pairs up here, um, except for the X, which is not paired. Uh, so uh, this is going to sort of describe some of the details or, or the, the issues that are going to crop up because of uh, Turner syndrome. Uh, generally going to be a short, um, lower hairline, um, and a variety of other issues. Uh, Kleinfelter syndrome is another issue with your sex chromosomes. It's caused by an extra X chromosome in males. And so they're going to be XXY. And the principal effects are development of small testicles and reduced fertility. 
Um, so here's what that is going to look like in terms of the karyotype. We can see everything else is paired nicely, except here we have an extra X chromosome. Uh, XYY, or super male syndrome, uh, is another uh, inherited disorder. Um, uh, it's not going to be inherited, but you can, um, can get it when your homologous chromosomes don't separate properly. Um, boys with the XYY syndrome tend to be fairly normal. Um, but uh, they just uh, tend to be a little taller. Um, IQs can be a little smaller. Um, they can have difficulties with language. Um, and there is some question as whether or not it's actually a syndrome or whether, you know, if it really makes that much of a dis difference. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's still up for debate um, with medical geneticists. And again, here's what the karyotype looks like with that. All right, and that is going to end our video for today. Um, again, if you want to check out some of those extra links uh, in terms of learning about the different syndromes, I highly encourage you to do that. Thanks. Bye.